Hi everybody, uh, today I'll be explaining the characteristics of herpes zosters. I'll be going over the definition of herpes zosters, also known as shingles. I'll be going through the demographics as well as the risk factors associated with it, uh, the prodromal pattern in which uh, herpes zosters progresses, um, the pathophysiology, and I'll wrap things up with a couple mnemonics. So let's get started. Herpes, so herpes zoster is the definition, also known as shingles. It's a viral infection caused by the reactivation of the varicella zoster virus, um, also known as the chickenpox virus. Um, so typically the chickenpox virus, after it has gone away in your early childhood, um, it usually remains dormant. Um, and later on in life, usually this can reactivate due to stressors, age, um, and autoimmune conditions can reactivate that virus and cause shingles. Um, in regards to the demographics, it, it can occur at any age. Um, the risk factors associated with it, it normally affects individuals older than 50, but children can also, uh, can also get shingles. Um, it also affects individuals with prior autoimmune conditions. Um, so for example, patients who have HIV AIDS, uh, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, those individuals are more prone towards getting shingles due to the stress that the body um, endures during that autoimmune condition with the inflammation. Um, a big risk factor is a history of chickenpox. So if an individual has had chickenpox when they were younger, um, they have a higher chance of receiving shingles um, later in life. So the prodromal pattern includes the, the prodromal phase. It includes pain, tingling, burning, headaches, and a low grade fever. And usually this can last a few days to a week. Um, the acute phase um, can last for a few weeks. And this includes having painful blisters and a rash. It occurs on one side of the body. Um, so a big pointer on understanding herpes zosters in comparison to other skin conditions is that herpes zoster shingles it follows a nerve pathway it usually unilateral it follows one side of a nerve path um, it's you wouldn't normally see it on multiple sides but it's usually unilateral like a strip it follows that nerve path um, that's usually the course of action that it takes and then the post-hepatic neuralgia is another phase of um, herpes zosters. It includes lingering pain after the rash has cleared and has crusted over, and this can occur months after. For the diagnosis of herpes zoster shingles virus, um, it's typically diagnosed with the clinical impression. Usually when the patient walks into your clinic or walks into the ER, Usually the, pre the patient presents with a unilateral rash that is extremely painful. Um, so this virus, this shingles, uh, herpes zoster, it follows a nerve pathway usually within a strip along one side unilateral of the body. Um, it is typically presented with painful blisters with a fever. So it's usually diagnosed upon impression. Um, in comparison to other skin conditions where other skin conditions are not very painful to the touch. Um, the pathophysiology behind herpes zosters is that after chickenpox, uh, and after the chickenpox infection, the infection remains dormant within the nerve cells. And as I explained earlier, the reactivation of this virus, the herpes zoster virus, occurs due to the stress on the body from autoimmune conditions, uh, inflammation, trauma to the skin, anything that causes stress to the body causes that reactivation of the shingles virus. The virus travels along the nerve pathway of the skin causing a painful rash and blisters. So a mnemonic that I would like to explain is heat up. So for H, it is heralded prodromal phase. And in this phase is the initial phase in which the symptoms begin with pain um, e is eruption, is when the skin rash appears. A is the acute phase in which it is beginning to have, the patient begins to have an experience in 10 symptoms that last normally two to four weeks. 
T is the timeline, meaning usually this can last from three to five weeks plus. U is unilateral because we understand that shingles travels up unilateral across the body following a nerve pathway and the rash occurs one-sided. And P is post-hepatic neuralgia. It's usually persistent pain after the rash has occurred and has crusted over. 